I think the tips and things I'm going to share in this video are some of the most important things I've learned over the past few years as a full-time freelance artist, and it's helped me get noticed. It's helped me learn how to put my work out there and how to talk about myself as an artist. And that is how to find writing and artist residencies, make your application shine enough for you to be noticed by them. Also how to make your application shine enough to be noticed by artist residencies. Um, to give you some background, my name is Prince. I am an Ohio-based writer. I've been a full-time freelance writer since 2017. I've been published in Teen Vogue, Catapult Story, Vice, a bunch of other publications. I run a podcast where I interview artists. And my first book, When They Tell You To Be Good, is coming out this year with Tin House Books in October. And when I legit tell you that this first book, using an excerpt from it, got me... Sam House, Studios of Key West, 12 Arts, Norton Island, Atlantic Center for the Arts, London's Own Book. It got me six residencies! And through that time, I got an agent, I got another agent, I was... I mean... A lot was involved, and I kind of really want to break down my process with finding residencies and looking for them and applying because I feel like I do have a pretty good process that I stay true to. I adjust a few things sometimes, but it, this helps me. So let's jump into it. My first kind of tip is based on how you find residencies. There are a lot of resources out there, but I would start with Twitter and newsletters. Twitter is a really great space for writers or emerging writers because there are so many pages that share resources for trans writers, for undocumented writers, for indigenous writers, for writers of color. I particularly follow the Twitter account Writers of Color because they share a lot of things. Kind of learned about residencies through there somewhat. But when I first moved to Columbus, um, a website that my roommate recommended, a few other places that I check out to look for residencies are Res Artists. I also check out Artists Communities Alliance. And the really big newsletter that I check out um, is Creative Capital. Creative Capital is a nonprofit that does all sorts of arts funding. They do really big grant opportunities throughout every year for artists that are trying to tackle really, really innovative projects. But they also have a monthly or so newsletter that shares a lot of residencies that you can check out. And it usually just literally tells you the residency what you're offered, um, what the residency offers you, whether or not there's any kind of stipend they give you, what the application fee is, and the due date. Following a number of newsletters that update you about residencies, it takes out a lot of the process of always having to search on the internet, like you literally just get one or two emails a month, and getting those emails automatically gives me a backlog of residency applications or opportunities that I can look up in my email, and if I wanna spend one day out of the month noting residencies that I want to apply to over the next month or two, these newsletters can be a good place to go back to and see what is out there. So that is my first tip. Try to find as many newsletters as you can to figure out when and where residencies are happening. My next tip is more about filling up your application. I highly recommend having a project that you've been working on that has at least one or two excerpts that really shines. Um, I say this because it's not the best strategy to start applying to residencies if you don't have even a piece of your work that you're really proud of. And this can be a chapter or two chapters. It can be a prologue or maybe an epilogue, but some part of the overall work that really gets you excited and kind of distills the overall arc or themes in the piece. And I did this with my memoir um, when I was writing it um, in about 2018, <clears throat> or no, 2019, I wrote a chapter that I just knew was unlike anything I'd really written before. And I started using that over the next year or so to apply to residencies. And that chapter is actually how I got my first residency at Sangam House in Bangalore, India. I went there in November of 2019. I did a video about it on this channel. Check it out. Um, but Bangalore was amazing. I keep t saying that it was the perfect first residency experience, and it was. But definitely knowing where your strong points are as an artist, as a writer, and leaning into those when you're applying. So I knew with that excerpt, it had a lot of really amazing research. I knew it had a really compelling kind of family narrative. It left the reader with a lot of questions, and it had a lot of emotional weight. Um, and so those were the things that I was kind of thinking of when I was using that excerpt to apply. The next step is kind of to keep you going and to apply consistently over time. This tip is to basically organize and backlog your application materials. Even if this is like making a Google Drive folder or a folder on your computer and marking it for the year and then just 
making one document for all of your application materials for all different residencies and then just copy and paste. But being organized in some way will help you not only track the places that you want to apply to. So I usually keep a list in my notes app or in my in my Google Drive of residencies that I want to apply to. I mark the month, I mark the residency under, I usually note where it is, and I note if there is an application fee or not. And then using that document, once I apply to a program, I then mark it under applied. And then I also try to note when it is expected that I will hear back from this residency. Um, and this is just a really, for me, it's a good way of keeping track of all the things that I apply to. And granted, sometimes I forget to put something down in the Google Drive. And sometimes I hear back from a residency and I forget that I even applied. I mean, I guess if you're really thinking about it, another strategy is if you use Gmail or any kind of email account, accounting system, um, label certain emails under residency application 2022 or applications 2022. Give yourself a bit easier of a process when you want to go back and look at the things that you've applied to. And then also noting where you're applying and how much it is helps you also write it off for tax deductions later on as an artist, which is also something to be aware of. Having a good website. I have run my website through Scarespace for a number of years. Um, running your own website and doing and paying for the domain isn't always affordable for everyone, but if you are in a city or a state that offers grants to artists, I would highly consider applying. I fund um, most of the ways that I run my kind of creative business, whether it's website, domain name, paying for Google Drive storage. I run those things through, um, in here in Columbus, Ohio, there's the Columbus Greater Arts Council and they offer individual artist grants. I've applied for that for the last number of years. It's $1,000 every year and it really helps me out with not having to think about all of the minute things of the process. And I also, I'm one of those people where I'm really nerdy. I will update my website every other week. I will tweak it. Um, but having a really good website where your sh work is showcased in a really clean cut and direct and accessible way will just really show the people that are, you're applying to that you take your work seriously, you know how to showcase it, you know how to talk about it. And just having a clean, polished website just automatically makes you seem more professional and it makes you seem more approachable. And it makes you someone that they most likely want to bring in because they see that you know how to talk about your work. And residencies want to be attached to people that they think have upward mobility in their career and having a good website is one sign of that. Um, another tip is kind of with what I mentioned earlier, but keeping your um, application materials backlogged will really help you as you apply for more and more residencies in the future. You can reuse parts of your bio, you can reuse parts of your artist statement, you can even reuse maybe parts of your project proposal based on whether or not most residencies are going to, if you're going to apply there to write, you're going to mention pretty much in most applications in the project summary or whatever that you're going there to write. But sometimes um, backlogging it helps you see and understand, even as you're going through different parts of the creative process, how your language and thoughts around the project changed. So backlogging it will just save you tons of time in the future. You won't have to keep rewriting things for new applications and you can adjust where it is necessary is practice your artist statement on people this is kind of like your bio but it goes a little bit more into the philosophy and context of why you make the work that you do i say practice it on other people because if you have other artists in your community with you people that you collaborate with they will have an idea of your work and they'll be able to kind of tell you where to fine-tune things i mentioned this because my best friend um has started applying to more grants and things like that he is a documentary filmmaker his name is eli hiller i'll put his info in the description but working with him and helping him apply to grants and stuff like this is usually the part where we put the most work in because I think a lot of artists don't really think or actively think about their artist statement but it can be something that can really kind of be a mission statement a value statement and it can help guide you into even thinking about the kinds of residencies that you want to apply to because some residencies are much more prestigious some are more catered towards people of color and more marginalized people and have processes internally that cater to that some don't care if you're a person of color and <laughs> some of them suck so having a good artist statement can kind of help you weed out residencies that you don't like and if they're not compatible with you they might understand that in your artist statement and then um, this is kind of tied to my earlier point with the website 
but application fees can be a really big barrier to applying to residencies and grants and other things. So I'd say one really big point is to always look at their website, see if they have application fee waivers. Sometimes it's even worth it contacting them and saying, do you offer application fee waivers to people that don't make as much money, who are from disenfranchised backgrounds? And then also, once again, if you can um, try to crowdfund or apply to grants that you can use to pay for these application fees. Um, because I know for me, if I didn't have my GCAC grant, it would be much more difficult to apply to these residencies. Those are all my tips to help you to get into residencies, to learn how to find them, to be noticed by them. Um, I've done six residencies, or I've been accepted into six residencies. I've done five. Um, and it can be a really amazing experience. Sometimes it can be weird, but I think more than anything, it's good for artists to be invited and brought to different spaces as long as you're safe and being taken care of. And once you're there, um, networking is a really amazing part of it. Getting to know other people and their processes, really spending time with other artists. Like I enjoyed Sangam House especially because I was in a house living with three other writers for a whole month in this whole new country. And it just really woke me up and stimulated me in a lot of ways. So if you are interested in doing residencies and you want to learn more about it, please comment below with any questions you have. If you want to learn more about the different residencies I've done, ask those questions below. And as always, stay strong, keep writing, and until next time. <laughs> I love the bad 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 bad